our world would be a very strange place if everything suddenly stopped moving. There's movement all around us. Wherever we look, we see examples of things moving. But how do things move? This unit looks at forces. How forces start things moving. And also, how forces speed things up, slow them down, and stop them. Very simply, a force is either a push or a pull. There are many different types of forces, but they are in fact just different names for pushing or pulling forces. For example, squashing is a pushing force, and the force stretching this material is a pulling one. Forces can't be seen, and so in science, the size and direction of a force is shown with an arrow. The length of the arrow tells us the size of the force, and the head of the arrow shows the direction in which the force is pushing or pulling. Here, the stretch material being pulled around the cyclist's leg, and here, the cyclist pushing down on the pedal. Here on Earth, forces act against or change movement all the time. But in theory, once a force has started an object moving, the object will continue to move in a straight line at a constant speed unless another force acts on it. This means that while an object, like a bike, is moving at a constant speed, neither speeding up nor slowing down, the forces acting on it are balanced. A change in this movement will only happen when the forces become unequal or unbalanced. So when the cyclist wants to speed up, the forward force is increased to become bigger than the forces opposing movement, and the bike speeds up. The object, here the bike, continues to accelerate until the forces working against the forward movement are again equal to the forward force. The forces are then balanced again and the object moves at a constant speed once more. If the cyclist reduces the forward push, the forces become unbalanced again and the bike slows down. When an object is stationary, the forces acting on it are balanced again. Here, another set of balanced forces are the weight of the bike and cyclist, balanced with an equal upward force, preventing them from sinking into the ground. Remember the words balanced or unbalanced are nothing to do with the way we balance on a bike. They refer to the forces that act on all objects. Here we can see that the forward push comes from the cyclist's legs. But where do the forces working against this push come from? This force, which constantly resists or opposes motion, is called friction. In other words, friction slows things down by acting in the opposite direction to motion. Friction can occur when an object moves against a solid surface. Here, the bicycle tires moving against the surface of the track. Friction also occurs when an object moves through liquids or gases. Have you ever tried running through deep water or cycling into a strong wind? Hard work? Well, that's friction. Even when a solid surface appears to be very polished and smooth to the naked eye, under the microscope, many bumps and dips are visible. The irregularities on the two surfaces catch against each other, slowing down movement. So what affects the size of friction? A heavier bike will experience more friction and therefore needs more effort or push than a lighter one on the same surface. This is because the greater mass of the object, the greater the friction.
The rougher the surface, the greater the friction. Knobbly tyres create greater friction and so grip better than smooth tyres. The greater the area of contact between the surfaces, the greater the friction. Wider mountain bike tyres provide more grip than thin tyres. Friction can be useful or a nuisance, but sometimes we can increase it or reduce it depending on what we want it to do. When we want objects to keep moving or move more easily, we reduce friction by selecting smoother surfaces. For example, very smooth tyres reduce the friction on a track racing bike. Using lubricants also reduces friction. Lubricants put a film between the two surfaces, which has the same effect as smoothing out the surfaces and reducing the friction. When we want things to slow down or stop, we increase friction by using materials with rougher surfaces. For instance, the rubber used for brake blocks has a rough surface that creates the friction against the smooth metal rim of the wheel. Moving objects have to push their way through air and they experience a frictional force against them called air resistance or drag. When an object moves through the air slowly, it experiences a small amount of air resistance. As it gets faster, the air resistance exerted on it gets bigger. Cyclists try to present a smaller surface area by ducking down and reducing the force exerted on them. Cyclists also slipstream behind another cyclist who deflects the air and reduces the air resistance for those travelling behind. The leading cyclist has to work much harder to overcome the frictional force of the air resistance. Designers use this knowledge in their designs to develop shapes that allow air to slip past them more easily. Shaped, rounded and curved shapes look more sleek and smooth and are called streamlined or aerodynamic. They slip through the air more easily and experience much less drag or air resistance. If, as in space, there was no friction and no air resistance, a moving object could go on moving forever. And all the while she says...